I'm behind the driver's seat. Is that a arrest? No, I wasn't my fault. Everyone loves animals and tries to take care of them, but sometimes there are terrible people who treat them poorly. Hey! Police officers of the Parma Police Department received a call concerning a lockout in June 2021. The officers arrived at the residence to find an animal stuck in a vehicle. They managed to unlock the car, but the dog was already dead. Investigation showed that the dog owner had left the dog in the car overnight. I got you. Can you sign this real quick? It's just the white. An officer arrives at the scene and meets the woman who called. He instructs her to sign some documents before proceeding to use his equipment to attempt to open her vehicle. The woman, named Casey Wise, stands aside as the officer does his job. No, no, he's not moving. He's down there. Here, your car's open. The officer moves his patrol vehicle and makes way for the animal warden. They move to Casey's vehicle to access the situation. The warden gets furious as she realizes what Casey's carelessness has done to the innocent animal. He's got, he's got to be. I can't imagine. If it's been in there all night, it's, it's in the floorboard on this side. It's behind the driver's seat. He's dead. Come back here with me, okay? Hang on. She's gonna take it. I need somebody to help. Oh, Billy was here. Arrest her. The damn dog's dead. The officer listens to the animal warden and decides to detain Casey while investigation continues. Casey is hesitant as he instructs her to stand, but she eventually does. The animal warden is visibly angry at Casey for letting her dog die. Oh, they're arresting me. Hang up Thank the phone. you. Thank you. Hang up the phone. Please. Okay. Karma. Come on, hang the phone up. Why is he? All right. Okay, bye. Okay. Stop her. Get out of here, baby. Do I kill you? Really? She just said that to me. I'm stabbing in my foot. Casey is escorted to the patrol vehicle by the officer. She misbehaves while walking and insists that she is a good person. The officer reminds her that she just caused the death of an innocent dog. No, I didn't. I was waiting for Phil and my battery died. Okay. Have anything on you? A strange man suddenly appears and asks for Casey. The officer instructs the man to move away if he isn't directly involved with the case. He also proceeds to get Casey's social security number. Awesome. Are you, do you live here? Oh, you're right, sir? Okay. Yeah, she's back here. If you're not a part of this, can I just have you step back there, please? Okay. Thanks. In the car. What's, yeah. your, what's your social? What do you say? Nothing. Just can, can you do me a favor? Just we're investigating. Thank you. What's your social? The officer moves away from his patrol vehicle and informs his colleagues that Casey's behavior is dispatch, confirms her identity, and the officers move to the patrol vehicle to interrogate her. She's got to be on something, dude. So she's acting super like she's on something. So, so what happened, Casey? How has your dog been in the car I left all day? My parents in Bedford at between five and six in the morning, like real early, because my dad leaves for work with him. My car was running the whole time, and then I took him out and then put him back in with the car running like I do, and the car died. What time did you? What time was that at? About noon. Casey Wise was eventually arrested on animal cruelty charges. Grab that puppy. Grab those. Grab it. They're dying. Do you I understand know. this? I know this. I, I, Do you understand that? I'm, I'm trying to get them to get, give, give me those dogs now. Oh, give me the dogs. Give me the dogs. Give me the other one now. Give me that one. Yeah, I give me that one. Here. Let's get them some water. You should not be having them in the um, car. I know, man. A Flagler County officer spotted dogs and cats trapped in cages inside a U-Haul trailer, panting from severe dehydration. Thankfully, a witness stepped up, helping officers hydrate the thirsty animals. Jason Donellan Sparks and Shauna Dowd, the owners, were caught at the scene and admitted to neglecting the animals for over seven hours without water. 
I don't know these people. They just pulled up and the dogs were passing out. Okay. There was like fluid coming out of the back of the dogs. You know. The flu was coming out of the dogs yeah, like from that, the rear like end? The, yeah, because they're, they're, they're like dehydrated. There was like was, the puppies in there. Was the actual um, the door dogs. open or closed? No, it was closed when they pulled up. An innocent bystander approached an officer and informed her that he saw some animals in a U-Haul truck. The animals appear to have been maltreated and dehydrated. The officer decides to investigate the man's claims. Grab that puppy. Grab those, grab it. They're dying. Do you understand this? I know this. Do you understand that? I'm trying to get them to the water. Give, give me those dogs now. Give me the dogs. Give me the dogs. Give me the other one now. Give me that one. Yeah, give me that one. Let's get them some water. All sweat. You should not be having them in the um, car. I know, man. Put okay. all these dogs in the. I mean, there. I need you to grab um, a water bowl. Grab a water bowl out of your pen. Yes, ma'am. They're okay. they're highly dehydrated. They're they're, they're, they're literally onto the verge. Is there more in there? Yeah. The officer confirms the bystander's report and sees that there are animals in the U-Haul. The animals are in poor condition and the officer claims they are dying. She proceeds to instruct Jason to move them out of the U-Haul while she takes the puppies to water. Um, this, this is sad, this is like hey, sad. Hey, this is really we'll sad. Pry. For some reason, man, we need to pry. I know they Brett were, is were, busy were, right now. Yeah, uh -huh. um, I need for him to come over here because I don't think that this is, these, no. this, this this is, is animal cruelty. Look at, all, look at yeah. all the fleas, look at this. Yeah. These, are, these puppies, the puppies are neglected. These can't even drink the water, oh my God. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That this is going, we're gonna have to, um, force, or, we're gonna have yeah, to get this. Yeah, here we go. Um, oh, okay. Uh, okay. They bystander assist the officers in tending to the puppies. It's a sad situation as the animals didn't deserve such unkind treatment. The officer proceeds to call for backup as she says it's a case of animal cruelty. The bystander and her colleague agree with her. When was the last time they had water? Uh, not too long ago. We also put ice in here for them because they're huskies. Okay. Okay. They, they, all need, they all need water. The officer returns to the U-Haul to question Shauna. The animals have barely been given any water since they were in the truck. The officer returns to her partner and informs her that the only water provided for the animals was in a bucket far away from the cages. They're all panting. Huh? They're all panting. She has, she, has a water, she has a water bucket that's away from their cages. And yeah. she's, no, I have yeah, animal control. Yeah, the cat. Yeah, the cat. Okay. Control over the cat. That's like that species. Um, watch your fingers. There's, there's even there's a cat in there that's yeah. panting too. I know. You should have seen the there, dogs. We have people bringing water. Okay. I'm did gonna he, run that. Yeah. Backup eventually arrives and the officer interrogates Jason and Shauna. She questions their possession of the animals. The dupe, who are revealed to be a couple inform the officer that they are relocating to the area and had to move with the animals. Y'all do own all the animals? That's what, that's what you said? Yeah, but the puppies we're getting rid of. We, we didn't plan on keeping them down here. They weren't even supposed to happen. We were visiting here and the family was watching the dogs uh -huh. and it happened. And so we were trying to take care of them, wait until they were old enough until the finally coming up. So I can't take care of this Yeah, I mean, considering park. that we're on the side, we're in the parking lot, and now they're dehydrated and we're trying to pull them down. The officer decides to interrogate the couple separately to see if their statements tally. She asks Jason to walk with her and instructs him to tell her the whole story. Can you do me a favor and come over here with me for a second? Just so I can talk to you by yourself. So I understand that uh, these deputies over here kind of you gave them a rundown of everything that happened. Can you just let me fill me in on everything that happened? Uh, which part? Like the whole story? Yeah, like yeah. Time? All right, we left uh, Tennessee at 9, 9, 10, somewhere in between there. Nothing in your pockets is going to stick me, right? No. no. You want to hold on to this phone? Or how do you work it? I don't care. Yeah, this is mine. This is mine. That's yours? Yeah. Okay. You have your... You have a second pair of clubs? You want to use mine? No, I got them. Just give me one second. Let me put this one. Let me put this one. I'll hand go. The couple eventually gets arrested by the officers for their poor treatment of the animals. A male officer searches Jason while a female officer searches Shauna. The couple is then taken to Flagler County inmate facility. Jason, listen to me. You're detained right now, all right? Got to stand up. Just stand for what? Up. For just, what? Just, just listen to me, man. What? I'm trying to help you out right now. Well, what did I do? I didn't say you did anything. So why am I going to jail? Why I didn't I say you're going to jail. I said you're detained. I... Just, just listen. First thing we're doing is do what you need to do. For safety. For what? Take her to wherever her house to go in. I'll explain everything in just a minute. 
In June 2018, Seattle police rushed to a 911 call about a wild scene on the street corner. A man in a frenzy, tossing objects, including a helpless kitten. Two officers swooped in, one heroically rescuing the kitten while the other confronted the suspect, later identified as Michael Stewart. What are you doing? What are you doing, my man? Excuse me! Hey, hey, easy. Whoa, whoa, easy. Whoa, whoa, hey, take, take, this, take this backpack off. What the fuck? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Okay, relax. Can you stand by, please? Relax. Oh. You my cat. Hey, hey, relax. I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. You need to calm down. You came out of nowhere. I didn't know this was going on. Okay, somebody call police. I'm cool. Okay. Obviously, I'm, okay. I'm not scared of that. Scared of fuck? what? I'm, I'm cool. I'm not. I don't have anything to do. Okay, this well, just relax, bro. I Why are you so cool. churned up? You keep saying it. I'm already relaxed. Okay. I'm not even so what's going on? Sit there. Sit there. Nothing, man. Listen, just listen I, to me. I'm telling you what's going can, on. Can you, can you listen to me? I'm Officer Passero of the Seattle Police Department. I'm so audio and fuck? video why, recording. Man, why did you screw? Why did you roll up on me like that? What? Because people said that you're throwing a cat, a kitten, up in the air and letting it flop oh, on the floor. Got to be Is that what's happening? Two officers approach Michael Stewart as he sits on a bench. The first officer instructs him to remain on his sight as he goes for the kitten that's on the floor. The second officer asks Michael what he is doing and instructs him to relax. Michael seems agitated and the officer tries to calm him down. Really? This so here's the deal. Just, 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 just talking to you. Just, just talking to you. I'm the worst about you guys. Yeah. Okay. I love you. Look, 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 look. You're, you're. Well, you're my name is Ghost. Okay, go by Ghost. Okay. Cool. With animals. Dude, really? dude, you seem like you're turned all the way up. What I mean by that is like you're racing. Like you're, uh, like you're racing. Because, uh, did you uh, use uh, narcotics? No, today? dude, no. I was just like, well, I don't you, did you use meth or something? Yeah. What's going on? No, I mean, like, what are you? I didn't use any clear that much like that, dude. That listen, listen, we, we, we cannot uh, arrest you. Are you going to listen to me? Yes, I know, but my cat, am I going to get my cat back, right? Can you I'm not going to take my cat. Right? We're fine. Yeah. Look, listen, you have to understand something, okay? Yeah, I can't, I'll listen to you, I promise. Can, can, can you listen to me? It's just what I look like, because I need to, to talk no, to me. Can, can you listen to me? Can you listen to me for a second, please? Yes, sir. You're making it really hard. So, like I said, we will not be arresting you for being high in public. We don't do that. We can't do that if we could. All right? We can't do it. We can't. There's no... It's not against the law here, all right? All right? So, here's the deal. It's obvious to me that, that you've used some kind of stimulant today. Okay? So, can you just be honest with me and tell me what's going on? Okay, yeah. If you use some clear, I don't care. Just yeah, tell no, me. you. If you let me say, so, tell so, you. Okay, what happened then? Please, don't take a second. All right, I'm going to have a seat. What happened? I don't lie. Okay, okay. what happened? <laughs> Got my tablet and strip on. The officer asks Michael what's going on and why he is so agitated. He also asks Michael if he has used any stimulants and informs him they can't arrest him for being high on the street. The officer asks Michael to be honest and Michael asks him to have a seat. Hey, how you doing? Good. What a shame. I'm going to stand over there because I'm terrified of this guy. Oh, that's okay. He told me to hold the kitten. Yeah. Oh, thank God you guys came fast. What was he doing? Was he throwing it or yeah, what? Yeah, he was throwing it on the bed. I didn't, I didn't, so I parked because I was going into glazers and I'm like, what is that? And then I'm like, oh, it's a kitten. And he was throwing it and then he was just walking around talking to himself and screaming. Oh, yeah. He's and then so he picked the cat up and threw it on the bench and I'm like, oh, okay. So I got out of my car and walked over here and I said, can I buy, can I give you a hundred dollars for the kitten? Right. And he lost his sh threw a bottle at me, calling me every obscenity in the oh, world wow. and then I called the cop. The officer returns to his patrol vehicle as Michael's intoxicated state makes him uncooperative. He meets the woman who called the cops and she tells him how Michael terrified her. He also attempted attacking her with a bottle. Well, did he hit you with that bottle when he threw it? No, he didn't hit me with did a bottle. Did he try to hit you with oh, a bottle? Oh, yeah, he was coming after me. Okay. He was like... Okay, there we go. Were you afraid? I was I terrified. You... Okay, so you, thought he was... so you thought he was going to assault yes. you. Yes, and okay. so was other people okay. walking down the street. Everybody was like yeah, doing of that. I mean, he's calmed down now, trust me. Believe yeah, well, me, we... oh, this guy's sure. calmed down. Right. Okay, so you want to... Yeah. Um, so... But he didn't, listen, he didn't actually make contact. So it in doesn't the matter. Washington, that doesn't matter. The officer asks the woman if she got hit by Michael's attack, but she says she didn't. She also said she was terrified by his actions. The officers see Michael's attempted assault as enough reason to detail him. Would you take the cat? Would you feel comfortable uh, taking the cat? Of course. I am there we go. rescue person. There we I go. I have rescue for days. I have a feral rescue. I have, a, I have, old, I have three cats. Okay. I have a... Yeah, we just want to make sure that there's a safe oh place God. for the I, cat. I can show you a picture. You can call my rescue... 
people. I, I volunteer for meow. The woman happily accepts the responsibility of taking care of the cat because animal control wasn't responding. She informs them she is a member of Burrell Rescue and is willing to provide evidence. Just listen, listen to me. You're detained right now, all right? Get stand up. Just for what? Up. For just, what? Just, just, just listen to me, man. What? I'm trying to help you out right now. Well, what did I do? I didn't say you did anything. So why am I going to jail? Why I didn't I say you're going to jail. I said you're detained. I, just, uh, just listen. First thing do what you handcuffs. need to do. For safety. Right. For what? I turned around for a house to go in. I'll explain everything in just a minute. The officers decide to detain Michael and begin a proper investigation on him. Michael repeatedly asks why the officers are sending him to jail and refuses to listen to their explanation. Cellulitis, what's that? Uh, that's a form of staph infection you get when you shoot up a log. Oh, staph infection? It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a communicable infection. Oh, okay, so I can't catch it. Are you a doctor? Uh, you know, why don't we just, why don't we um, transport him for the assault and then once we go back to the precinct, we're doing a good inventory. And if there's any um, drugs, we're add, yeah, we're just add the bucks up. Is animal control coming to take us? So the control cat? is open. The officers successfully place Michael in the patrol vehicle and realize he has cellulitis on his hands. One of the officers explains that it's an infection gotten from injecting drugs often and it's not communicable. Michael was arrested for assault and animal cruelty. He eventually pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to 180 days in jail. Hey, Sarge, this 182, this, uh, it's a puppy and I, I can't see it, but it's crying, it appears to be in distress. Yeah. 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 A Pensacola police officer rushed to a mall following reports of a dog trapped in a baking car. Surrounded by worried onlookers, he wasted no time, seeking permission before smashing the window and rescuing the distressed pup. Yet, the owner's only concern? Their shattered windshield. Hey, Sarge, this 182, this, uh, it's a puppy and I, I can't see it, but it's crying and it appears to be in distress. I'm in front of the food court right now. The officer attempts to contact his sergeant in order to get permission to force his way into the vehicle. The sergeant eventually responds and grants the officer permission to proceed. Come here. Come here. Come here, little guy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Do you have any water? It's not really cold. The officer opens the back door as he searches for the puppy. He finds it under a seat and takes it out of the vehicle. He then asks the bystanders for water, and a woman informs him that she has some. My hands got hand yeah, 180. Oh, can find nothing. Go ahead. Put a note I had to make injury into the passenger uh, front window. Oh, he's so thirsty. Yeah. Oh, so look at him. He knows Yeah. Oh, Let me, baby. you don't mind holding him? Let me grab it. Sure. The woman feeds the puppy as the officer communicates with dispatch. He informs them to put a note out that he made entry into the front passenger window. The officer gives the woman the puppy to hold for a moment. Pouring that out. This is not bad cold, but it's cool. It's just cool. Let's get him in the shade. Or get him in my car. Come on, stay down. I will put you right here for right now. Right there. Get this AC. I oh, yeah. I mean, I got. I have two small dogs at home. 
the little guys is just... The officer returns with a makeshift dog bowl and the woman fills it with water. They take the puppy to the officer's vehicle and place him in front of the AC. The officer reveals to have two dogs at home, explaining why he knows how to handle the situation so well. 30 minutes since we got here, and then now it's almost an hour or so, and they still haven't came back. Yeah, yeah it was, it dog. was, it was that dog would have been dead by then. The yeah, well, we, we got the call at 12.55, yeah. um, and, you know, so. More security personnel arrive on the scene and they wait for the car's owner. A lot of time passes and they realize the dog wouldn't have survived if it were left for so long. Or can you come over here for a second, please, so we can finish all this? I can't hear you. I get what you're saying. We got food in the car right now that we don't even want to spawn. I understand that, but also it's been an hour and 15 minutes now that y'all have been in there, at least since we've been here. So the dog would have been in there in 94 plus degree temperatures for an hour and 15 minutes. The owners of the vehicle arrive and the man walks around his car while observing the damage done. He says there was food in the car for the dog, but the officer explains and says the dog was crying due to the intense heat. Well, if you give me a second, let me write all this information down. I'll tell you everything. I just okay? see you nervous. You're shaking. I don't know what I'm talking but about. I'm not. I'm not nervous. Oh, I've been out here what? in 100 degree weather for over an hour. So you just need to get your information. Here you go, buddy. Right. Yeah, no. The only reason why I'm shaking is because I've been standing out in this yeah. 90 degree weather with full polyester. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what happened, guys, is um. I came up, um, and unfortunately the dog was in distress and I couldn't get in your vehicle. Yeah. We couldn't make contact with you guys, so per Florida law, we're actually allowed to break the window, um, and that's what we did. So we broke the window to get the dog. The man walks around and suddenly says the officer is nervous because his hands are shaky. The officer explains he has been waiting for him under over 90 degree temperatures and says he isn't nervous. He gives his reasons for breaking into the vehicle. The owners were eventually cited by Escambia County Animal Services and given a civil penalty for cruelty to animals. Step out here for a minute. Oh, come on. No, Step I out of the car, keep wrong. your hands in sight. This is, get off of me! Bradley! Stop! I didn't Damn. do anything it's wrong. It's okay. Don't start the car. No. Let go! <laughs> In November 2023, a woman called the California police to report her dog being stolen and barking in someone else's yard. The woman later informed officers that she found her missing dog. Another call was made to the police by her neighbors, saying that she attempted to break into their home while wielding a butcher knife. The officers eventually find the woman, but her attitude is completely hostile. She is later identified as Kiriana Rebecca Lyles. Is she one of your neighbors? So she says she lives, she actually knows where she lives. I've never seen her before. Mm -hmm. We just came out here, she was in her backyard. Mm -hmm. And we were like, what are you doing? She said, oh, you guys stole my dog and then pulled the knife out on us. Mm -hmm. We were like, we don't have your dog. And then how, how is she, the how is she holding the knife? I can actually see out the video on the camera. The okay. okay. The officers arrive at the address of the caller and ask where Lyles is. The couple doesn't know where Lyles is at the moment, but they begin narrating their experience with Lyles and how she claimed that they stole her dog. The husband also informs officers that he has videos of the incident and decides to show them. And then this, so she came back. She, the first time she came, she knocked, and then by the time I got out, she was already walking away. And then this time she came back in, and we were like, all of a sudden we heard this like super loud banging, and I was like, what the heck was that? And so um, I got out, and I was like, make sure the dogs don't get out, so... I walked out, and then on my other cameras, I saw that she just like barged into the backyard, and mm -hmm. I was like, what the heck? And then by that time, when I came out, she was like walking out, and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And then she was like, I'm looking for my dog. You guys have my dog. I'm like, you don't have your dog. The officers watched the footage on the husband's phone and confirmed that Lyles was actually holding a butcher knife on their property. So when you noticed that she had a knife, was she communicating any like specific threats? No, she with wasn't the knife? like threatening like I'm gonna stab you or anything, nothing like that. It was just did like, she like did she did she like point it at you or like try uh, to be like menacing? She was kind of just swinging. Swing. It wasn't like mm -hmm. at me. The officer asks the husband if Lyles was threatening them with her knife, but he says she wasn't. She swung the knife around, but didn't threaten to use it on anyone. The husband also claims she wasn't going to do anything with the knife. So from what you guys told me, just preliminarily up front, it doesn't sound like she was making like specific threats with the knife, but she wasn't like demanding things from you with it or anything. Yeah. Kind of more like, you know, out of her mind and maybe like drug addled. The husband concludes his description of the events that occurred, 
The officer asks what he'd like to happen when they find the woman, and the wife says they should stop her from entering people's property for security purposes. He then confirms that Leal wasn't threatening them and behaved somewhat unstable. So we think we might know where she's at, so we're gonna try to go contact her now. The officers inform the couple that they have an idea of where Lyle's is. They decide to approach her to hear her own end of the story. I'm sorry. Hello, ma'am. I'm, I'm Do you control your dog? Right now. Can, Can you please? control your dog? Yeah, she's just sitting there. Okay. I just got back from getting her. I'm sorry, I'm not dealing with this right now. I'm going through a lot. What are you going through? The officers find Lyle sitting in her car, a white sports car, and she doesn't seem interested in talking to them. Her dog can be seen in the vehicle, and the officer instructs her to control it as it sticks its head out of her vehicle. Step out here for a minute. Oh, come on. No, Step I out of the car, keep wrong. your hands in sight. Get off of me! Ricky! Stop! I didn't do anything it's wrong. It's okay. Don't start the car. No. Let go! The officer instructs Lyles to step out of her vehicle, but she chooses to ignore him. He decides to pull her out, but Lyles resists arrest and turn on her car against the officer's instructions. Lyle speeds off after almost causing harm to the officer and he is forced to shoot at her vehicle. I've got to go back and give a statement. Uh, just have some oh, I got a D5 car? Just go in there for now. Hey, hey, George, I've got to go back and yeah, give a statement. Throw in the white car. Multiple patrol vehicles surround Lyle's vehicle and the officers emerge. They are armed and instruct Lyles to step out of her vehicle. Lyles eventually steps out and is immediately arrested. She faced a felony charge of assault on a police officer. Her bail was set at $500,000. Hey! Oh, 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 oh. What are you? Stop fighting or I'm gonna tase you. In December 2020, Daytona Beach deputies responded to a call about a woman attacking maids and threatening to jump off a balcony. The woman, later identified as 35-year-old Allison Murphy, locked herself in her room and refused to open the door. She suddenly opened it as the deputy stood outside and threw her dog off the balcony. An officer arrives on the scene and meets other officers. He gets directions to Allison's room to see if he can get to her. We got a um, suicidal female. I guess she's threatening to jump over the rail. She's right here in this room. Yeah, if you guys can just hang out down here. All right. Appreciate it, man. The officer makes his way up the stairs and arrives at the room. He knocks on the door, saying he is from the sheriff's office, but no one responds. Sheriff's office! Sheriff's office! No one responds to the knocking on the door, so the officer asks his colleagues if they have the room's spare key. Ask him if he has the key. The officers slide the key to him, and he smiles at his colleague while picking it up. The room door suddenly swings open. Allison emerges with her dog. Everyone is surprised as they watch Allison pick up her dog. They expect her to drag it inside the room, but no one expects what she does. Allison suddenly throws the dog down the rails as the officers attempt to stop her. She tries entering the room, but the officers tackle her. Hey! What are you? Stop fighting or I'm gonna tase you. You can't kill dogs! You know, I can tell Somebody get her. Oh. We got her arms. We got her arms. We got her arms. We got her arms. Yep. I'm not scared. Hey, Mom, I'm gonna make sure no one else is in here. The officers decide to move Allison away from a wall that she's leaning on. An officer steps in and confirms that the rest of the room is clear. They also confirm that the dog Allison threw down is alright. Is that dog okay? Yeah, it took off running. I try to grab it. Alright, let's get her away from this wall. Yep. The rest of the room clear? Yeah. yeah. The officers take Allison to the patrol vehicle, and she behaves abnormally while on the seat. An officer is forced to assist her in sitting properly. He returns to the others, and they discuss the incident that just unfolded. Come on. Turn over. There it is. There, there we go. Now we're making strides. She comes running out. The dog was loose. She grabs a hold of it. Uh-huh. And we all thought that she was just gonna grab the dog and probably bring him back inside. She right over the rail. She just like, threw him over the rail. That's all we have for today, folks. 
Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our content. Don't forget to hit that notification button to get informed of our new content. See you in the next one.